that's my router that I built a few years back and uh, I'm going to upgrade it. Um, it's about 24 by 24. Cutting area is down to about 16 by 16. And uh, I have a need to cut out some sheet metal parts that are much longer. So I'm going to uh, basically replace the x-axis here. And I'm going to use the carriage and everything from the y-axis. I've done quite a few projects with this router. You know, it does pretty good on graving. It designs for the, the garden for the wife. And trays to hold my tools and parts. It uh, organization, but uh, it's too small to uh, do the sheet metal work I want to do. So time to upgrade. Before I can get going on the router upgrade, I need somewhere to put it. So I built this cabinet. I don't have room to have a router sitting out four feet by four feet in the middle of the shop or anything. So this cabinet holds a lot of tools and lathe and mill parts and accessories. And uh, the top up here is where I'm going to put the router. It's about six foot long and about three foot wide. And when I extend this, that's the size I'll make it. So there's the uh, Y carriage I'm going to use. Right there. And this is the X that I'm not going to use. I've been spending some time at the mill making parts for this modification. So this is the original Y and Z axis that I'm keeping. So I made these bearing blocks. They uh, bolt on the bottom of here, on this original unit through here. And then they have some bearings that go in up at the top here. And their uh, axles are shoulder bolts here that I bought a bunch of. And then on the bottom, they have this little rocker assembly, so it goes in here with another shoulder bolt and has a little pivot action and is adjustable to uh, set the preload. And then on the side goes this bracket here, which the belt rides on and will be clamped to the two ends of the belt to uh, pull the x-axis along. So here's one of these put together over here, and it's on a piece of shafting. This is the shafting I'm using. This is a cutoff leftover, obviously. So you can see the top bearings here support the weight, keep it from moving, and then the bottom bearings can be adjusted to set the preload. So it worked out pretty good, runs smooth. That's the X bearings and gets this assembly back on the x-axis. This is the end clamp. There's two of these. The other one and these full-length shafts are sitting over on the router workbench. So this guy has holes in the ends that are the same size as the shaft, inch and a half. And then it's split on the circle and it's tapped for a quarter 20 cap screw here. So it'll act as a clamp to clamp onto that shaft. On the bottom, I have some half-inch holes for feet, so I can adjust and level the whole thing. I'll do that with a laser. And then it has some holes for these end blocks. And these end blocks go on here, like so. And they support this jack shaft assembly, which the x-axis belt, which I have here, will ride on and be driven by the x-axis motor. And then it will connect to the side plates on these bearing blocks to drive that back and forth. So it's about ready to be assembled now. I have all the parts milled, so that will be next in assembly. Putting the bearing blocks on the old assembly. So there's a quarter 20 screw that goes in here. There, and another quarter twenty down here on the bottom. Okay. 
So the old shaft datum line was here, and the new one's here. So that gives me a couple more inches on the Z. It was a little tight. The other one was great for a router, but didn't work so well when you got into anything of any depth. So this will have a little more Z travel. Now it's ready for the Lord. See if we can get this X axis on here. There it goes. Excellent. So here's most of the parts connected now. I have these one and a half inch shafts, which are not the greatest shaft. They had some oxidation on them, but the price was right, which was free. And I machined up these end blocks. And now I put these adapters onto the Y, and we've got a nice rolling six foot travel, no, six foot cutting area, six foot six travel um, X axis. I think that's going to work excellent. So it's going to use belts to, to, to the X axis, so there's some um, shafts that go on the end and pulleys that uh, will drive the belt back and forth, which will drive this x-axis. But so far, so good. Okay, so I'm checking all the corners level. And I can just adjust them right up to, oops, get the square right, just under that two-inch mark. And go back and do the next corner. It's a belt clamp where the uh, ends of the two belts meet and I've profiled the bottom part of the clamp to the tooth profile and so I've got it set. I'm just going to need to tighten it up the last little bit. Putting together the vacuum chamber. Uh, so this is the tabletop right here. These will be the uh, long way supports and here's the end plates. Including this one who has the hole already for the PVC pipe. So I'm going to use a two inch vacuum line. And so that's been bored for two inch. And one for the other. One. Gets mounted on top of those end frames with just some bolts. And so I'm going to start putting glue on this and assembling it. So here's the vacuum chamber. I just finished assembling it. And after it it uh, dries a little more, I'll put the bottom on. The top is down right now. This flange here sits on the end rails that support, we're supporting the x-axis rods. And uh, the vacuum port's right here for the vacuum source. So as soon as it dries a little more, I'll put the bottom on and then it can go into the router. There's the vacuum chamber installed. <clears throat> I guess the next thing will be to uh, drill holes all up and down.